I'm building a two trailer tiny house and it's time for a build update. I've just finished making my double glazed window and I think we should check it out. So the fun part about joining these two trailers is I have to be able to swing these two walls into the end of the main trailer here. Now so that I've got enough room that I can stack them in and then the roof lines up when the sliding roof comes over, I actually needed to finish the ceiling back a bit and have this really thin piece of roof over the top. Now that was kind of difficult to deal with but what I realised is I could just put a window in there. Now I actually really love this window because it sort of creates this glow in the house and you can't actually see it other than maybe a metre into this part and half a metre into there. So you don't see where this glow comes from, but it glows into the house, creates some nice light. And during the day, you get these angled pieces of light at the house, which look really cool. But the problem I've got is I've got this flat piece of glass up there that is up high, flat. And when that gets cold at night and I've got warm, moist air in here, where's that gonna condense? up there and the piece of glass sits up against plywood and there's no way to drain that off, which is gonna be a problem. Now, I probably should have thought about this when I was designing how this is gonna work, but to be honest, it was just complicated and I didn't really get that far down the path. I did give it some thought and sort of forgot to design that in. So here we are. Now, what I realized was I've got the piece of glass sitting on top and I kind of had this cavity that I thought, well, if I could fill that and then put a piece of glass on the bottom, I could kind of make a double glazed window. So that was my idea. The hope was that if I double glaze that, the interior piece of glass doesn't get as cold, hopefully it can stay a little bit warmer and I don't get condensation on there. At least that's the hope. So to understand a little bit better, we're gonna to go to double glazed window school. Now I'm no expert on this, but this is my understanding. The problem we've got is we've got this piece of glass here and that's exposed to the elements. So when it's getting cold outside, it cools this piece of glass down. And the problem we have is when we have warm, moist air on the inside here and it touches that piece of glass, it causes the air to condense and that's when we get the, the moisture forming on the glass. Now what we're gonna try and do is to put a second piece of glass in here, seal it off and fill it with an inert gas. And that stops the transfer of heat between the two. So when this piece of glass here is getting cold, it's not cooling down this interior piece of glass. Hopefully that can stay warm and we don't get the air condensing. So on the tiny house, I have that cavity and I've installed the piece of glass in the bottom there. Now, trick for young players, if you're making your own double glazed window, make sure there's no fingerprints or smears on the inside. I had the joy of getting the glass nice and clean, and as I was cleaning it, left a little smear on there, had a nice smear on that bottom piece of glass. And uh, I was gonna leave it, but in the morning sun, it really showed up, so I <laughs> had to take it out, <laughs> remove the piece of glass, which is an absolute nightmare, clean it, and then put it all back in. Now, to do the double glazing, what I've done is I've put tire valves at either end. And what I'll do is pump inert gas in this end, and have a tube that comes up inside here. Now the inert gas is heavier than air, so as I pump it in, it'll slowly fill up and eventually come down out this tube. And at the bottom here, I'll have a candle that when the candle goes out, I know that the inert gas is built up inside and coming out of that tube because the inert gas will put the candle out. At least that's the idea. So let's check it out. So to attach the bottom piece of glass, I made up black aluminium angle that I fixed and sealed into the bottom of the window and did that on all four sides. I then used VHB tape attaching that to that aluminium and then using that to hold the glass in place. Now, because the piece of glass was long, thin and pretty difficult to sort of maneuver up into place and I'm doing it by myself, I actually left the film on top of the VHB tape. That allowed me to position the glass in place, push it up against it, I could then pull the film out from the side, from beside the glass, exposing the adhesive and sticking the glass to it in the place that I wanted it. Now this was a bit of a fiddly process, but it wasn't too bad. The worst part about it was when I had to pull this piece of glass off to get in and clean up that smear. I tell you what, that tape does not like letting go. 
and uh, how I didn't shatter that piece of glass trying to get it to let go of the tape, I'll never know. So to fill the window with gas, I'm using my MIG welder gas, <laughs> which seems a little crazy, but it's actually pretty close to what they fill windows with. This is called Argo Shield, which is mostly argon with a bit of CO2 and a bit of oxygen, but it's still an inert gas, and hopefully it should stop that thermal transfer between the two planes of glass. So what I've done is I've hooked up my regulator on a really, really low flow rate, and that's to stop turbulence when it's entering into the window. I then hooked up the hose with a tire valve coupling onto the valve and that allowed me to flow argon in between the two panes of glass. At the other end here, I've got a little tube going up through the valve and the window up to near the top of the glass. Because argon is heavier than air, it'll start to lay across the bottom of the window and slowly build its way up. And as it builds its way up, it'll eventually start flying out of the top of that tube. And that tube then goes down into a container where I have a little tea light candle. So what happens is as the argon builds up, it comes out of that tube, it'll then start flowing down into that container. And as that rises up, it'll eventually put out the candle. So when the candle goes out, I know that the window has been filled with argon. It's now starting to flow out the other end. I can seal up those two valves and uh, we should be good. With the window gas, I can then finish off the lining. I put the piece on the end that finished off the ceiling in the main trailer and then put the, the side pieces and the dressing pieces that go in around the swinging walls and the sliding roof, getting ready to finally clear coat the interior. So before we finish up, I thought I'd just put out one thing and that is if you want to do a vertical window, which is a more common type of window than the horizontal one I did, you could do the same thing by putting a valve at the bottom here, slowly pumping in the argon until it comes out the top there. So if you look at the cross section, you're pumping in the bottom, be slowly building up until it comes out the top and fills the inside cavity there with an inert gas. So that's the double glazed window. Now you may have noticed since we've moved to the inside, the videos are getting sort of further and further apart. And the problem is, is on the inside here, the work is just a lot more intricate and everything's kind of interdependent. So it's kind of hard to put together this nice, neat, package video of, hey, I've done this. Um, but also by the time I do get to it, they become this massive production that's just taken me forever. So in an attempt to try and just get this house finished and keep doing the videos, I'm gonna start making them maybe just a bit quicker and uh, a bit more frequent. So hopefully we can follow along the progress, but I can get these videos out a bit easier to you. So the next steps in the house is, as you can see, spraying all this plywood, which is almost actually done. So I'm gonna do a video on that pretty soon. Just finishing that off now and then waterproofing the shower and getting that ready. So hopefully I can uh, finish that off and get that video to you soon. You guys know the drill, don't hate, educate. Comment down below if you see anything this video can be improved or if you've got any questions about how I've done the double glazed window. If you're one of the crazy people still watching, make sure I show those two hands in the comment. In the meantime, go build cool stuff. I'll see you again soon.